Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing something different with my watercolor paints. I'm gonna try a brand new experiment to see if I can paint with watercolor on this cotton canvas zipper pouch that I just bought at a Michaels craft store. Will this work? We know that watercolor can't be painted on just anything. Typically you use watercolor paints on watercolor paper. So to paint with watercolors on other surfaces, you need to prepare the surface for painting on it with some sort of medium. Now after doing some research, I learned that with fabric, you can actually paint directly onto it with watercolors if you mix the paint with something called fabric medium. I don't have any of that. So that's not what I'm going to do today, but let me know in the comments if that's something that you guys would like to see me try at some point. I'm going to use my Daniel Smith transparent watercolor ground to prep the surface of the pouch for painting. According to the directions on the jar, it says that this product creates a paintable surface for canvas, paper, plastic, hardboard, and even non-absorbent surfaces like glass, plastic, and metal. Although it doesn't mention fabric, I'm still going to give it a go. I start by taking an old paintbrush and coat the white canvas on one side of the pouch with a generous amount of the watercolor ground, evenly spreading it all over, but not quite up to the edges, since I'm not planning on covering the whole thing with paint. I let this dry for about an hour and then add another coat and then a third one, just to be safe. It is recommended that you wait 24 to 48 hours before painting on the prepped surface. Once the watercolor ground has cured, I grab my paints, a water jar, some paper towel, and my silver black velvet size eight round brush. These are all supplies I would be using for any other watercolor painting. I am so curious to see how the paint will respond to this unusual surface. To draw the flower on, I decide against pencil since it would be difficult to erase and would most likely leave ugly graphite smudges on my nice white canvas. So I opt for a light pink water soluble pencil from my Karin Dosh set. I lightly sketch on the shape of the flower. And if you guys wanna try the same flower, by the way, my peach blossom reference photo is from Pixabay. I'll leave a link in the description for that. The watercolor pencil works great for the sketch. I mix up some pink watercolor paint. This is Rose Opera, and I use broad brush strokes to paint on the flower petals. I start with some of the darkest shapes, painting around the sunlit white stamen. And I'm delighted to realize that this surface is responding beautifully to the watercolor paint. It doesn't feel exactly like paper, but I can still do lovely wet and wet effects, starting with those light pink washes and then adding in darker pigment inside of those wet areas. The paint is blending softly and naturally, even forming some lovely subtle blooms. I add in hints of cobalt violet light hue and some darker pinks in the center of the flower. Now, when you're trying to paint loosely, Every little application of paint matters, so try to make your brush strokes distinct and purposeful. I add some hooker's green in three separate areas surrounding the flower. This is merely to suggest leaves, and I'm allowing my brush to scrape across the surface. This is called the dry brush technique, and it's working just as well on this surface. I add some black in between the center petals and around the base of the flower, just to add some depth to the composition. Now to help the petals stand out even more and to appear like they're glowing in the sunlight, I loosely paint in some sky blue all around the flower. I add bright pops of golden yellow to complete each stamen and a little dot of black at the base of each one. I paint just a few more pink and green details, making sure that each additional brush stroke contributes to the flower's beauty rather than diminishing it. The last fun effect is to add some whimsical watercolor spatter. To do this effect, I swirl some watered down dioxazine purple paint in my palette, making sure my brush is sopping wet, and then gently tap the loaded brush over the painting in areas where I want there to be speckles of purple, mostly along the sides of the flower. I then go back in with my brush and create larger shapes to help balance out the composition. I let the painting dry completely before sealing. Watercolor paint will easily reactivate and smear if it gets wet again. So for something like a pouch, which is intended for storage and regular use, you'll definitely need to protect the painted portion with some sort of sealer. I decided to try my clear pouring acrylic top coat since it's pretty much all I have in my cabinet and I couldn't find the Mod Podge. 
I apply the acrylic using an old paintbrush right over the watercolor. Careful to hold my brush almost flat so as not to scrub or disturb the paint underneath. There is a little bit of bleeding that happens with the black paint, but honestly, it's probably because that area was still not completely dry and I was impatient. Oops. I make sure the acrylic is covering the entire painted area, just leaving a little bit of that brush texture. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. The top coat actually dries pretty fast and I am so happy with the results. The pouch is still flexible, the inside feels smooth and unaffected by the paint. I thought it might feel like the inside was glued down, but it's still silky. I probably wouldn't try to throw this in the washing machine, but it seems like it will stand up well with use, maybe as a travel makeup bag or a pouch for your pencils or markers, and would make a super cute and unique gift. Overall, I'm really happy with this experiment. Let me know in the comments what you think, and if you guys decide to try this project, I'd love to see it. Tag me on Instagram at eolsonart, and I'll check it out. Thanks for watching.